So, hey guys, today is a very special episode because I'm going to be introducing my very good friend and also one of my biggest mentors who taught me about life and about how to be successful in America. So, here we are with Mark. Mark, thank you very much for your time and it's always so good to see you. Thank you. So, we, we have been knowing each other for the, for the past five or six years. Right. How did we met? Do you remember? I think I placed an ad in uh, Craigslist and you applied for a job. Yeah, you're looking for an assistant and for a driver, and then I, I met you, we had an interview, we talked, and you pretty much you hired me the same day. Yes, I did. And uh, I really liked what you told me at the time, that I think you selected me out of like few hundreds or five hundreds, I think you said. Yeah. Candidates. Right. Yeah. So I'm just curious, what, what got you, how did I get your attention? Uh, you were very sharp um, during the interview process. I'm trying to remember all the things myself. I remember it was your intellect. But that's how I decided it was you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And also, I remember when I met you, I looked at you, and I was like, I gave you a compliment. Mark, you look so young, which is true. And then you was like, oh, I like this guy. So like, <laughs> <laughs> that's probably how it worked out. That's you gave me a compliment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Mark, you are one of the most successful person I met in Los Angeles. Thank so you. So it's amazing what you accomplished with your hard work and your intellect. Can you please tell us a little bit? Just tell me, what, what do you do? How did you get here where you are? Basically, what I do is I buy, uh, usually not sell, um, apartment buildings all over the United States. Uh -huh. And what we're really good at is being able to manage a portfolio of hundreds of properties in 22 different states. Mm -hmm. So, which is very difficult to do because you have to be able to take people uh, generally that barely have a high school education and manage them and making sure that they're productive for you. Mm -hmm. So we became, through the use of technology, very good at being able to have a platform to manage properties mm -hmm. in, you know, we probably manage in 30 or 40 different cities now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how did you get into real estate? Was it something you always wanted to do or by chance? No. My family has been in it since the 1940s. Mm -hmm. So uh, I tried high tech ventures back in the um, late 80s, early 80s, I'm sorry. And I didn't quite have what it takes to do that, even though we came up with some very innovative things. I became an expert at uh, people that do repairs in um, people's homes. Mm -hmm. This is a coincidental thing about it, and also in manufacturing. So when I got into real estate, I decided to take my knowledge of doing what's called field service automation and bring it and apply it to real estate, which every time you call the manager and ask him for a maintenance man to come out to fix something in your apartment, that's mm -hmm. how we, we utilize it. We became very good at it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you guys, you, you buy properties and you also manage the properties? Correct. Mm -hmm. I remember you also mentioned something to me, if I recall correctly, that you invented or did something with a barcode. Yeah, one of the, I was one of the founders of doing, using barcode technology. That was part of my factory automation stint in early in life, where we started using barcodes to be able to track products going down a production line and then also ultimately use them for servicing products out in the field. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was one of the first guys to do that. Mm -hmm. So you also have like this, like you're very tech savvy. Very tech savvy. And you love gadgets and you love technology. Right. That's great. And then I want to ask you a little bit about real estate. How do you, what kind of properties are you usually buy? What are you looking for? Is it like residential, business, houses, big apartments? Well, I pre predominantly buy apartments because it's the safest investment. I own a fair amount of office space, and you don't make any money in the office space world. Uh, I never really got into retail, and that's turning into be a disaster right now for all the people that invested in retail space. Mm -hmm. So um, apartments is the safest, um, and it's safe because you know you're sharing the. Uh, the expense over 100 units, if you have a 100 unit building, and the chances of all 100 people moving out is pretty remote, so. Mm -hmm. It's also the easiest to get financing on. The apartment buildings? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there like a certain properties that you're you specializing on? 
Well, in the last six or seven years, I've really mo moved my focus to affordable housing, which uh, I guess my timing was perfect because now that's what everybody wants to get into. Um, you, I should you, have you foresaw this. Uh, yeah, I, I should have exploited it more, you know, seven, eight years ago when I first got into uh -huh. it because nobody was in it and I could have bought anything super cheap. But um, it turns out that's the place you want to be right now if you're buying apartments is in affordable housing. One thing that you told me, and I, I'm never going to forget it. There are like several things you told me, and I'm going to mention them in a minute. But you always told me, never bet against the city or never bet against the government. So. Yes. Um, basically, when all of the people during the economic cycles have gone broke, I was the only guy left standing in many cases. So a lot of people had t tough economic times, and you know, I never had any of those issues because of the fact that the government was paying me the rent. Monthly, always. Yeah. How many apartment units do you have right now? It's got to be around 18,000. Around 18,000 units? Yeah. In 22 different states, states you said, in yeah. America. Uh huh. Cool. Very cool. Um, what, what do you do? Like, I know you like flying drones. I know you recently bought a very luxurious yacht. Yes, I like spending time on my boats. Uh -huh. I have boats in LA and I have boats in Miami. Uh -huh. The Miami one is the big one, the yeah. new one. Uh -huh. Yeah. How is Miami? Is there like any good business opportunities with having yachts? Miami is where yachts? everything is going on right now. If you want to start a business, you got to uh -huh. be in Miami. Why is that? You have a couple hundred thousand people there moving in there monthly, it seems like. Oh. So I think it's, they have a thousand people a day moving to Miami. So things are open, economy is good there. It, they they never close, so nobody, no business has really got hurt for too long during uh -huh. the COVID uh, virus. They don't have any rules and restrictions on, they don't have the same regulations on business like they do in California. It's also, there's no state income tax, uh -huh. so it saves you uh, in the higher end brackets 14% a year. And the cost of living up until recently used to be substantially cheaper than living in, buying a place in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can, buy, you can still buy a house in the outskirts of Miami for $500,000. Whoa, a nice house, I assume. Yeah. You can't buy nothing in LA for that money pretty right. much. Uh, I'm curious, and I would like to ask you, is it good to invest in property right now in LA? No, I would not. Mm -hmm. The interest rates are very low. I just don't think it's got a good economic climate because you're, you're basically, you're capped on how much you can uh, increase your rent. Mm -hmm. You know, for every dollar you increase your rent, you make $240 so, uh, per month. So, I mean, so if you increase your rent a dollar, you make the value of the building goes up $240. And right now, uh, the cities have now, through rent control, have capped the maximum you can increase your rent set. Mm -hmm. So that limits the potential how much money you can earn. Mm -hmm. Is there, uh -huh, okay, that makes sense. What are some of the important uh, lessons for a real estate person? If somebody wants to get into real estate or follow your footsteps, what would be the best way? Is this something that you require like a college degree or education, or is it something that you can acquire those skills by, you know, self-taught? It's skills? actually one of the easiest businesses to get into, a lot more difficult now, but uh, I always bought cash flow properties. Most people in the real estate business don't buy cash flow properties. Just a quick question here, please. So when you say cash, cash flow for the audience that don't know, what does that mean, cash flow? Properties that generate a, a nice profit mm -hmm. where you actually can live off of the, the, uh, the investment you buy every uh, month. Mm -hmm. Whereas most people are doing it based on the future, buying buildings based on the future income mm -hmm. of what the building will be able to do. So I look at everything based on a yield basis. If I invest $100, what my percentage return is going to be. And most people are looking at how much is that building going to appreciate over the next 5, 10, 15 years. Uh -huh. That strategy has always worked out well for me. And you keep utilizing that over and over right. again. Also, when you're buying apartments, it's really a business. It's not an investment. What the difference is, is that an investment you don't have to work very hard at. A business you have to work, go to work every day. And an apartment building is something that you have to go to work every day at when you're running large apartment buildings. So it's a business. What are some of the major consequences that you're facing right now by running with, your, with running your business? What are some of the difficulties? Well, this, year, this last year we had five apartment buildings that got destroyed through either fire or hurricane. So you have insurance 
and all they do is hand you a check to rebuild it, but then you got to go through the construction process, which is a lot more difficult than I thought it would be uh, building five apartment buildings at the same time. Mm -hmm. Some of them I'm building from ground up. Mm -hmm. um, COVID did not help. Uh, fortunately, only 50 or 60 of my tenants decided to take advantage of me by not paying the rent. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I have 50 or 60 people that aren't paying me, which is frustrating because It'd be one thing if they were actually affected by the COVID, but most of them aren't. Mm -hmm. But like when you say the people don't pay your rent, my understanding was that the government pays most well, of the percentage. I, there's, there's two types of, well, there's probably many types of affordable housing, but the mm -hmm. two main types are where the government is subsidized, uh, subsidizing the tenant, or the government subsidizes the building itself. Uh -huh. In the areas where the government subsidized the building, the, ten, the government's not paying the rent. What you're doing is you're ending oh. up with a cheap apartment building to buy. Uh -huh. Also, I recall there's like a term that you used to that you're using, and I remember when I was working for you, uh, tax deals. Tax, uh, tax credit mean? deals. Tax credit deals, yeah. Tax credit deals, yeah. Okay, so tax credit deals are basically when the government goes out and issues tax credits to a tax credit investor, usually a bank, mm -hmm. and in exchange for that, the bank becomes a partner in the deal and they give you cash in exchange for those tax credits, therefore reducing the cost of construction of the building. Mm -hmm. Are those advisable uh, ventures? They're very, very good. They're, the, in my opinion, the best deals to buy right now. Tax credit deals? Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, I would like to jump back about the real estate and how to learn about real estate. I remember you always told me it takes two weeks to learn everything that there is to learn about real estate. If it's something like that you said. If it's true, then how come only a small number of people become very successful in real estate? Like what are the other attributes that the person has to have besides hard work and dedication? Well, the biggest problem I see is most people is they don't want to learn it. They want to do things their way. Okay. I have a friend of mine who uh, basically has been in the business for 25 years and he's limited by himself. himself. I, gave him some advice on some things he was doing regarding getting some loans and he never took the next step to actually um, read about it or, or get educated about it. I think most people don't want to take the time to get educated uh -huh. and then follow the education. Hmm. I'd say that's 99% of all people actually. What other some, is it very important to, I, I remember we used to go to different real estate conventions and you know, hearing lectures like that. What do you think about those kind of stuff? Is this something that you are considering to do eventually in the future, to teach people in the form of a lecture in classroom or online? Or I did it, it's very lucrative for me. I was making close to $1,000 a person and I'd have two or 300 people sitting in the classrooms when I did it. Um, the only reason why I don't do it anymore is the person that was actually doing these lectures has since retired out of the business so she no longer prep uh, plans the seminars. Uh -huh. So I haven't been doing it in a while, but it's very lucrative for me. I think most of the people, though, don't have the mindset that this is a technical business. They think it's more of a feeling. And the, um, it, to be honest with you, it's a very technical business. And by technical, can you be a little bit more specific? Uh, everything's based on a formula. Well. Okay. And you either follow the formulas that you set up or you don't, and most people don't want to learn them. And I have a question here. When it's said that you say formula, is this formula something that is accessible to everybody? Oh, or absolutely. Or is it a formula that you have to come up with your own stylish formula? You make No, it. it's everybody should be following. Uh -huh. Within a certain guide of lines of parameters, they should be using, it's math. Simple so lots math. Of mathematics. It's, it's, it's a lot, it's just math. It's very easy to use math. Financial math, like, you know, things like internal rate of returns, uh, which is basically taking the cash flows of what the apartment building is going to be during the course of you owning the investment and discounting yeah. it back to what it's worth today. Mm -hmm. You're you, quantifying everything, basically. Technical. I didn't know that. It's interesting. But uh, I also want to ask, do you think right now is a good time to get into real estate? I think you, ha you have to get into real estate whenever you're right, ready for it because it's a business and there is no great time to get in. Um, when prices go down, it's usually very hard to get financing. So, you know, you have barriers to entry there. And when times are really good, it's easy to get financing, but you have a lot of competition. 
I think you have to be niche based in real estate where you're um, picking one area and become an expert at it and then you're the expert in that area. Uh, such as you did with affordable housing. I did with affordable housing, that's my expertise now. You know, you can also become an expert in hotels, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's, al well, there's always entry points, like right now the hotel business is decimated, so it's probably a very good time to get into it, but you have to figure out a path that will eventually get the profitability, you know, at the end when, when everything returns back to normal. Mm -hmm. I assume besides, you mentioned technicality is very important and knowing the formula, but also, I assume this is also a very creative process when you negotiate with people, when you're convincing people, or when let's say you're raising money for certain deals, or well, not so much. I never had, I don't think it's really, well, I guess my area, they consider it creative, but I just stayed with the mm -hmm. fundamentals. Uh -huh. Okay. And if you read the real estate one-on-one books, they tell you exactly what to do, but nobody ever follows it because nobody else is doing it. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. They tell you to go out there and buy things a certain way and the market doesn't reflect that so everybody strays off the course. Hmm. Cool. I also want to ask you, I know that you always buy. You very rarely sell. Uh, why is that? Taxes. Uh, tell a little bit more okay, about it. Okay, so basically real estate, the reason why you go into real estate rather than owning a nice chain of ice cream shops is because you don't pay any income tax if you do it correctly. And the reason why you don't pay any income, income tax is because of what's called depreciation. Uh -huh. And depreciation basically is a paper write-off where you're able to uh, um, reduce your taxes over a period of time uh, based on the value of the building. Uh -huh. So they, you, 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 you basically wear the building out over a period of time, which is basically a paper wear out. It's not, it's not a, a, a realistic wear out. Uh -huh. but the, um, the key thing that I do is I make all my investments with a lot of uh, consideration toward taxes. And nobody does that from what I look at. Um, well, most people, when you sell a building, you have to, all those taxes you didn't pay, you pay when you sell the building. Mm -hmm. So um, there's other ways to address the tax issues, like uh, putting it in a private placement uh, insurance policy or doing 1031 exchanges. Um, there's a wide variety of ways of tax avoidance that you can do, but selling, them is, selling an asset that's making you money is not a good way to invest it. Usually refinancing the property and taking the cash from the refinance mm -hmm. would be a better way to, um, to get bigger. Mm -hmm. um, can you give us like a quick example? You're considering to buy a building, 50 unit building, apartment building. What are some of the attributes that are required that has to pass your criteria to seriously consider buying the building? Well, I don't buy 50 unit buildings anymore because they're too small. Oh, you st oh, yeah. oh, what is the smallest one right now that you buy? I, I generally try and stay over 100 units. The way I look at deals basically is, is it worth my time based on the amount of cash flow at the end of the year? So a 50 unit building in most places doesn't generate enough cash flow to get very excited about to pay for your bills. Mm -hmm. And it's just as easy to manage a 100 unit building as it is to manage a 50 unit building, so why not do a 100 unit building? Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the areas, size. I, my requirements are that it has to generate at least $125,000 after the loan's paid in cash flow. Uh, per month? No, per, per year. year. Per year. Mm -hmm. And otherwise it's not really worth it. Mm -hmm. Well, you can have a a, a boiler go out, which could cost you 35000 and then if you, if you had a building that only generated $50,000 and the boiler cost you thirty, dollars you, you, yeah, you, you ended up working the whole year for $15,000. Yeah. Not worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, you, it's, 